my dear, my dear, they put up their faces. Hey, you see, all these people that want to sell the asset of Nigeria, Ashiri Yinti too, you want to put Nigeria on sale? I hope you are watching me live and direct. All of you, ah. I'm going to punish you, every single one of you. Hey, what's up, my people? It's your girl, Yadiola. I'm sure that you must have heard that these people are trying to sell Nigeria's national asset. Ben, he started with the richest man. Ah. Hey, the richest man in Africa. Ah, Alekodangote, why now? You want to do me like that? When will you have enough, Alaji? Hey, when will you have enough? You did not even consult me. So now you want to own the whole of Nigeria? I know where you live, fa. And the two of us cannot fit in one shokoto. Um, how do you translate that? Yeah, one trouser. The, the two of us cannot fit in one trouser. The man suggested that. For us to get out of recession, that we should sell the multi-billion dollar liquefied natural gas company. And they also want to sell an MPC. Hey, father, father, I like it. Hey, beru alon, hey, beru alon. Say that in Hausa. You don't know how to speak Hausa, get out. You can't even borrow some of your money, Alaji. So we can pay you back when we are out of recession. The man is worth 12 billion dollars. You're 12 billion. Hey, father. So you are not selling your own assets. You want us to sell our own assets. Well, lie to lie, Alaji. Hey, bear along. I was not surprised, by the way, that the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, backed this idea. I said, ah, Uncle Saraki, you know, in a duel, in case you are watching, he's not hiding it. Everybody knows that hey, my uncle is a pro. Man, you want to in case you are watching me. Hey, Lojuti, Olongbo, hey, Lojuti. If everybody is talking about selling assets in Nigeria, it shouldn't be somebody that has several corruption charges against him in court. Ah, Uncle Bukola, Uncle Bukola, don't let me look you in the eye. So now they said that the finance minister Kemi Adiosu also seconded this idea, saying that the money realized from the sale of the company would be used to fund the 2016 budget. I said, Auntie Kemi. Eh, Auntie Kemi, Auntie Kemi, Auntie Kemi, you but why? Why you they do me like this? Ah, you disappointed, Mama. Auntie, if we are selling this one for the 2016 budget, by the way, by the way, we are still looking for money for the 2016 budget. This is October, no be so. So, Auntie Kemi, please move closer, <laughs> move closer. What are we going to sell for the 2017 budget? And then the 2018 budget, what are we going to sell? <laughs> why am I even asking? <laughs> the next thing they will say that they want to sell the railway, and our parks and our tourist attractions. Before you know it, my people, they will start selling us the people. Ben, why not Kuku sell the people of Nigeria? And Tikami, eh, eh, Shetawa, you must to sell all of us. So if you want to sell Nigeria, then you must to sell all of us. First of all, we are not selling. We are not selling anything. And that is despite the fact that everybody knows that when you sell something at a desperate time, it akuta lo matter. That is to say that the assets will always be undervalued and sold at a very cheap price. Everybody knows that. They are telling us that they will buy it back, you know. I said, how many assets of Nigeria have you people bought back? How many? How many have you guys bought back? Ha, wait, wait a minute. The vice president is also on the list. Hey, what? Hey. Bam, you are so bad, your bone. And then you are welcome to this program. Ah, you disappointed, mama. You disappointed. What happened? What happened to you? I hope you are watching. You know that I'm the only one that will tell you the truth. Ben, you have me on speed dial. Bam, you are Simba. You have me on speed dial. Every one of you, every one of these people that supported this idea, they all have me on speed dial. Everybody knows my phone number 0001223. Everybody knows my number. Why not call me for advice? Why didn't you call me? Eh? Now let me tell you what I think. I think that we should sell these people's assets. Yes, all these people that want to sell the assets of Nigeria. We should sell all of their assets. And let's see what we can make from that. We should sell their houses, their cars, their companies. A lot of them have big, big companies. Fada, they have companies. Their shares, we should sell their shares. And let's see how much we can make from that. Second of all, we have to cut down the salaries of all government officials. How long have I been saying this on this show? That these people are overpaid. That is why their stomach keep getting bigger. We need to cut down their salaries. And I'm talking about all the officials, the ministers, the senators, House of Assembly. You know I spoke with a senator last week that came here for the General Assembly. That is a senator, Abdullahi Ali Yusabi. Eh? My father, in case you are watching, it was very nice meeting you. I know that you will not forget me because we were arguing back and forth. That Do you feel like it's okay how much you get paid? You see, with to me, uh, Adiola, the, look, the let's face let's reality. Let's know. Hey, you know, it was very nice meeting you. He's a senator as well as the spokesperson for the Senate. You know that the man told me that Nigerian senators are one of the least paid senators in the whole world? The National Institute for Legislative Studies brought out so many countries 
they've compared in contrast let me tell you that we are actually even the least paid you're the least paid yeah, we're not in the world. yes compared with other countries okay okay we hear you but uh, Olga, exactly how much do you make how much do you get paid sir well i think uh, the issue of how much do i get paid is a debate that to me is just over body so how much do you get paid you go and ask the document is there because people have been asking this question. Ben, he refused to say exactly how much. And that is different from the allowance. So, <laughs> so I propose that our senators should get, let's give them 200,000 naira. My people, this is a time of recession. 200,000 naira is enough. 200, we are in recession. Everybody else is feeling it. People have not been paid since November of last year. And there are reports of people that died because of hunger, because they've not been paid in God knows how long. So the senators, the lawmakers, the ministers, they should be able to do away with 200,000 naira per month during this time of recession. Do you know how much we would save? And that money can go towards the budget. And to me, I hope you are listening, eh? <laughs> you know, I do. Seriously, I know that 200,000 naira may sound ridiculous to these senators, you know, because I know that they live in a whole nother world. But did you guys see the news about how Saudi Arabia cut down the salaries of their ministers by 20%? We're talking about Saudi Arabia, where they have oil money. They cut down their salaries by 20% in order to help the economy. Why can't we do that? They are not selling their assets, but they are cutting down the salaries of ministers. Now, this company that they are trying to sell, the liquefied gas company that these people are trying to sell, do you guys know that it generated $85 billion for Nigeria in the last 15 years? $85 billion. That's how much the company generated for Nigeria. And they want to sell it. And that amount is just what was reported because you guys know that a lot of money was stolen in the last five years. Yet, they want to sell this company. How bad? And then should we talk about NNPC? Isn't that the only thing that we depend on in Nigeria? By the way, human rights lawyer Femi Falana has already laid out how Nigeria can recover 200 billion dollars. Billion dollars. I'm not saying Naya. How we can recover 200 billion dollars from outstanding revenues. What I don't understand is why we are not following this man's recommendations. Those of you that are watching me, how many of you, if you have somebody owing you 50 million Naya? And then you are broke and you desperately need 10 million naira. How many of you will now start selling your house when somebody is owing you 50 million naira and you know that that person has your money. He's spending it anyhow. He keeps buying new cars, new houses. You see him spending your money with your koro koro eyes. Of course, nobody will sell their assets when they have outstanding revenues that they can go and recover. Unless the person is crazy. So why are we trying to do that with Nigeria? We're trying to sell our assets when we have all these big, big people in Nigeria that are owing us money. Why don't we collect the money that they are owing us? And and that is not to talk about what we can get from agriculture or other natural resources if we eventually diversify our economy like we've been shouting all this while. Nigeria, you are never ready, but you guys are not doing anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Low. So last week was crazy. I'm telling you, Nigerian officials were here in town for the United Nations General Assembly, as you guys know. So every year I try to interview government officials. But I just want to say that I've related with these people enough to tell you majority of them, majority of Nigerian officials, they live in their own world. They live in their own world, as in their reality and our own reality is completely different. You'll be telling these people stuff and uh, I mean, they don't, they don't even know what you're talking about, which is why many of them would watch my show and they will just laugh she's just joking i met several governors that day i met the governor of zamfara <laughs> in adu Mayaga, you refuse to grant my interview don't worry i know where you live and then i met the governor of lagos state that is governor ambody yes <laughs> peace sign peace sign. he told me that he watches my show that is why i made him do the peace sign he was in a hurry so we didn't get to do his own interview and also the presidency promised us that we would have a press conference you guys know the meaning of press conference right you ask the president questions and he answers but i was so surprised when we got there that day these people gave the president a speech to read to us. I was like, why is he reading us a speech? He was reading a speech about what he did at the UN that week. And I'm thinking, we've been following you the whole week. We know what you did. Why are you not reading us a speech? I mean, I was still thinking that there would be a Q&A session after the speech. Boy, I was so wrong. The speech lasted forever. I'm telling you. And then they said that after the speech that he would take photos and leave. That the Minister of Foreign Affairs would be the one to take our questions. Can you imagine this people? Can you imagine this people? That is not a press conference. We are supposed to ask questions and the president is supposed to answer us. Of of course I objected. I said nobody moves until I asked my questions. <laughs> Not like that, but uh, I insisted that at least the president must take a few questions. And they were all like, oh, no, he's not taking questions. I said, eh? we are not 
here to take photos. We are not here to talk with the minister. We know where the minister lives. We can go to his house when we need to talk to him. We are here to talk to the president. We have questions for him, but there are some that is only you that can answer. Finally, he took three questions from three different journalists. So if anybody wants to see that, it's on Sahara TV's YouTube page. Now, this was me trying to ask a second question. You know, I was asking about the Chibo girls. When some enemies of progress were trying to stop me, God knows your names. These are governors, by the way, so I'm not going to name them. They know themselves. They said that their is enough. Move. I said, ah, you want me to walk away when the president is talking to me? I said, Mr. President, you were saying 230 something else. Please continue. And then the man continued what he was saying. <laughs> why these officials think that they have to shield the president from the media i don't understand i don't get it the man was actually willing to talk to us and he was giving good answers to questions the man was willing to talk to us but these people that surround the president they think that they are protecting him by not letting him speak to the media why i don't know what they are afraid of last year the man granted exclusive interviews to several people including your girl <laughs> and when the interview came out last year nobody even noticed how good i looked because you guys know that i look good Anyway, everybody was talking about what the president said in the interview. They said that he was articulate. They said he did well. So what are you afraid of this year? Is it because you know that the economy is not doing well? You don't want us to ask questions about that? Ah, God knows your address. In case anyone is watching me from the presidency, that is not correct. That is not correct. Thank you, Jale, your excellency. I miss you. You know, you know, it's been a long time. That is not correct. Next year, when the president is coming to New York, plan for him to have a proper press conference, just like all other presidents do when they come for the UN General Assembly. If the media writes whatever they want, you will start shouting. You will start disputing that the media is lying. But when the media is running after you for interview, you refuse to grant them audience. I'm not saying that the media should write false things about the presidency. Don't say that I didn't say my own. Anyway, Anyway, you guys now don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to South Sudan, is it possible that the president and the now former vice president are benefiting from the ongoing civil war in their country? The world's newest nation is being torn apart by a horrific civil war fueled by massive corruption. President Salva Kiir and former vice president Rayek Machar command forces responsible for mass rape, child soldier recruitment, and massacres of civilians. A US-based watchdog group, which was co-founded by George Clooney, recently released a 66-page report with evidence that the president, his former vice president, and their family members are able to leave Lurge because of the ongoing war in South Sudan. Top officials in South Sudan have built personal fortunes while their country suffers. They've hijacked the state, looting natural resources, robbing state coffers. Government money is diverted to lethal private militias and weapons used against the people. Now this is the video of the president saying that the cause of the war in South Sudan is corruption among his ministers. Some of these ministers have bought apartments, they have bought you know, very beautiful houses, villas. They are hiding it in Kenya. You know this. And they have refused to, to reveal. Shut up! Shut up! So South Sudanese ministers have houses in Kenya! Woo! Fada! I heard that some of them have houses in Uganda as well. Uh -uh, and they are hiding it. They are Wait a minute. The president is not hiding anything himself, is it? President Kier's official salary is $60,000 a year, but among the Kier family getaways is this elegant villa in Lavington, an upscale community in Nairobi, Kenya. Ooh, snap, father. Why would the president of one country have his home in another country? I don't, I don't understand. And they said this is just one of his houses. So he has his own house in Kenya where he can escape if things are not going well in, I mean, is that what is going on? Because people are dying in South Sudan, but the president's family members are living luxurious lives abroad. The president's family has lived in luxury outside the country. They post videos partying in five-star hotels, driving expensive cars, and jet-setting around the world, while average South Sudanese are living through hell. That's not the only thing, and I'm not making this up. But guess what? The president's sons, they now write president's son as their occupation on their national ID. As in, you ask them, oh boy, what do you do? They say, I'm a president's son. See, it's on paper. Hey, hey, what? So now being a president's son is an occupation in South Sudan. Tell me something. And um, according to this report, the former vice president is doing the same thing. You guys remember him now? The one that they replaced within 48 hours. Uh -huh. Mashar tried to sell off the country's oil to a Russian arms dealer in return for deadly weapons. While his family lives in different homes outside South Sudan, far from the war zone. And now his family stays here, in Lavington, in the same neighborhood as President Kier. 
You see what I'm saying? So when this report came out, of course they denied it. And guess what the presidency said? Well, do people expect the president's family to rent a house in the slums of Nairobi? I was like, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. No, he did not. Say what? Say what? Who? Father. I was like, no, he did not. Like, he didn't even deny that he has a house in Kenya. So you guys know me, you know? I found some South Sudanese officials here at the United Nations when they came uh, last week. First of all, I found the Minister of Petroleum. And by the, by the way, it's not like I'm short or anything. I'm not short. The man is just really tall. He's, yes, he's just very, very tall. So I asked him about this report and he said that the report is not true. He said it's false. That he read the whole thing, that they are just trying to paint the president bad. Mm -hmm. I also asked him about the president's response. You know, the whole, do you guys expect the president's family to rent a house in the slum? You know, I asked him about that. And the minister told me that the president was not the one that actually said that. I said, who said it? He said, oh, it's his spokesperson. I said, mm -hmm. So then I also met the South Sudanese ambassador, the one that lives in Washington, D.C. And he told me that the whole thing is a scam, that they are just trying to make South Sudan look bad, especially the government of South Sudan. He said that the president already owned the house in Kenya since 2008, and that was before South Sudan got its independence in 2011, that they didn't steal money to buy this house in Kenya, that he already owned the house even before there was a country called South Sudan. Sudan. According to this ambassador, they are now preparing a comprehensive response to dispute this report by George Clooney. So my question is, who do you believe? What is really going on in South Sudan? What do you guys think is really happening? Are these people really profiting from the ongoing war? Is this whole thing has come? Are they just lying about them? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As you guys know, I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So before I leave today, I'd like to read some of your emails. And the first one is from Chimere Ohajinwa. And he says, hi, Adiola. Can you please talk about the roads in Abba, in Abia State? It's really bad. It seems like Abia State does not have any governor for years. Things are worse in Abba compared to any other place in Nigeria as businesses have completely collapsed. What? And then I found some pictures of the road in Abba. I mean, just... Take a look at that. I was like, Father, how are people traveling in Abba? These are death traps. These are death traps. I said, ah, my people in Abba, you not don't suffer. Ah, you not don't suffer. These are the roads that you travel on every day. Ah, Mr. Governor, Mr. Governor, now the whole world knows how the road looks like in your state. Ah, there is God in everything we are doing. Please fix the roads for the people of Abba in Abia State. The next email is very similar. It's from Olatoye Ajani. He says, hello, Adiola. Please talk about the traffic from Ilezik to Ikeja and it's because of some bad spots that are close to the airport boundary. So people sit on this road for hours. You are going to work and you are sitting in traffic. How are people supposed to be productive? Governor Ambode, you have met me, we have met each other. Now let us do right by the people. Thank you very much, my brother, for writing. The last email is from Ogunleye Adiola. What? My name's sake, you not do well. Thank you for writing. So he wants me to give a shout out to a friend of his, that is Toyosi Craig, who was recently honored with the 2016 Young Researcher of the Year Award in South Africa, yes, so Nigeria's making us proud. Kudos to you, my brother. Making us proud at home and abroad. That is what I like to see. Eh? The award is duped Renewable Energy Research Excellence Award and is jointly organized by Renewable Energy Center of Research and Development as well as South African National Energy Association. And he did really well. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much for making us proud in South Africa. All right, guys, that's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adela.keepingitroll at gmail.com. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. All right, guys, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram until two weeks' time because you guys know I've been working daytime, part time, nighttime, and overtime just to bring you the news. <laughs> I need to take a week to rest and relax. Until two weeks' time, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out.